If you thought that the smartest way to get better at doing 500 piece puzzles is by doing 500 piece puzzles, then I can tell you, nope. Welcome to Puzzle with Emilia. That's me and on today's video we are going to talk about how to practice to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship or any other speed puzzling tournament or if you just in general want to get better at doing puzzles. The first time I ever heard about such thing as speed puzzling or puzzle competitions was four months ago. I'm not even kidding. So when I heard about that, I found the world, I take a look at the time limit, which is 90 minutes. I started doing these 500 piece puzzles with the time. There was zero, zero chance I could make even one in under 90 minutes. However, now within the last two months, my new personal record is actually 50 minutes and I have won two individual puzzle competitions in a row. So what the heck happened here? And the thing is, I haven't done puzzles for too long. You know, when I was a kid, I think we had a handful of puzzles at home. I did them multiple times. Then I forgot that puzzles even existed for like 15 or 20 years. Uh, I'm currently 27. And last year, only a year ago, I was gifted some puzzles and I kind of got into them a little bit. Not too much, but I did like uh, another handful of puzzles last year. And then I started like doing them regularly uh, after the year changed to 2023. But the thing is that when I go to the competitions and compared to the other people there, I have like a major lack of experience time-wise because there's a lot of people who have been doing puzzles like constantly for 15, 10, even five years. And then I'm there like, hey, I started a year ago. And uh, the thing is that even though I do have the lack of experience, I haven't done them for too many years, I used to play sport in an international level. This is over 10 years ago. I used to play like in the youth uh, Finnish national team when I was underage and I was also coaching. Nowadays I'm an entrepreneur. I own a growth marketing business and I also teach in my field. So. I'm gonna like specialized on doing the most results most effectively. So I have a lot of knowledge about like practical and mental uh, training methods that can be kind of like applied on multiple different things. And some people think I'm a little bit crazy. I kind of like, I'm kind of like the girl who have to have everything down to science. Like even I run even my household like so today I will share you five points on how to practice better for speed puzzling. It doesn't matter what is your level right now. It's just about your personal development with your puzzling skills. And I hope you will have like a multiple aha moments during this video. So let's go. So let's talk about speed. And if you're now thinking like, Oh yeah, that's kind of obvious. I mean, it's called speed puzzling. Then yes, I agree 100%. But here's the thing. Most people don't practice their speed in the most optimal way. So if you have a speed goal, most likely you're not able to reach that speed goal by just doing those 500 piece puzzles. Obviously it wouldn't be a goal otherwise. So let's take an example. Last year's winner, Alejandro, his PPM, which is pieces per minute, is 15, at least was on the final. So let's say your goal is to beat Alejandro this year. So here's the thing. If you're now doing a 500 piece puzzle and your PPM with that uh, is, let's say, nine. Nine pieces per minute. And you want to get it to the 15. I mean, that's a lot of, okay, I mean, there's a lot of growth needed to be done with that. So how do you shoot practice for the speed is by doing smaller puzzles. All kind of mini puzzles. 
You can start with the 50, 100, 150, 200, 300. Let me explain you why it is. Because actually if you're practicing for the speed and you're doing the 500 feet puzzle, your brain and your fine motor skills don't actually get the practice for the speed you want because you're not able to reach it yet. But most likely you're going to do mini puzzles, smaller puzzles, faster. So you just get the feeling, the intensity of doing a puzzle with that kind of speed. And remember, now we're only talking about speed. There's also other aspects, other points that are coming later on this video. But talking about speed, you have to do the mini puzzles. So for example, I started with the 50 pieces puzzle just to get the feeling and be able to reach the speed goal I want. And when I reach it, I take a little bit uh, bigger puzzle, like 100 pieces, 150, 200, 300, trying to keep up that intensity and speed a little by little until I get to the 500 piece puzzle. Obviously, I'm still not yet there, but I've gotten much, much better. This is a little bit closer look to some mini puzzles I have done lately. And if you wonder how to calculate the BPM, it's very simple. Just divide the piece amount with your time. For example, if you did a hundred piece puzzle and you did it in seven minutes, so just divide hundred with seven and your PPM is around 14.3. So let's talk about durability. I don't know if durability is the right word. I don't know what the native English speakers here are thinking, but I think it fits perfectly for this because you know, speed was going to be exhausting mentally and physically. I mean, you start to lose your focus, your back starts to hurt, your neck starts to hurt, or your patience is scrambling down. So durability is very important, but please keep in mind, it's completely different skill that you need to develop from speed. It's not the same thing. It's actually quite the opposite. So this is not something that makes you specifically be faster. This is working on your durability. I will tell you how to practice it and why is it important. So if you're doing those 500 piece puzzles, which I'm talking about because it's the standard size for most puzzle competitions, so what you should practice is doing in the speed puzzling method, thousand piece puzzles. I will give you an example from the sports world. So if we have a runner who runs only 10 kilometers, only practices for 10 kilometers, never runs the 11 or 20 kilometers. And then we have a marathon runner and they both take part in the competition where you need to run that 10 kilometers. I'm not saying that the marathon runner is specifically faster, but I can tell you for 100% sure that after the marathon runner uh, ran that 10 kilometers, it's gonna be like, oh, this, is what, this was just a warm up. <laughs> so the same applies to the puzzles, because if you practice to hold your focus, hold your patience, uh, working a little bit on your back and neck, uh, longer periods for the thousand piece puzzle, it's going to be easier. It feels easier to do those 500 piece puzzles. Even my physiotherapist said when I was like, I mean, what should I do? I mean, it just starts hurting your back and your neck when you're in the position like this. And there's not too much movement. And I personally like to also stand quite a lot of times when I do the puzzles because I feel it's faster. Um, so obviously he said that, you know, it doesn't even really matter how fit you are. Of course, fitness is important, but it doesn't really matter because there's not too much movement. So, so your body just needs to get a little bit used to it. So your body getting used to it for longer times is by doing those bigger puzzles. These are some of my thousand piece puzzles that I have speed puzzles lately. If you haven't done any speed puzzling with bigger puzzles before, I recommend to start it uh, with a little bit easier puzzles. Uh, so take a picture that you feel comfortable with. Don't take too hard one uh, at first. But now that we have talked about the speed and durability, let's move on to the point number three. 
It's so important to know your own strengths, but it's even more important to know your weaknesses and work on those. Because in the competition, you never know what puzzle is gonna come out. You never know. So um, your weaknesses can be related to multiple stuff. It could be like the colors, patterns, type of puzzles, but it could be also uh, some action during completing the puzzle. For example, flipping the pieces. By the way, if you have never actually taken time on that separate part of flipping the pieces, I recommend to do that and see how much it takes you. I'm fine with flipping, but I have a lot of other weaknesses and I'm going to tell you about them right now. So I love animal puzzles, but unfortunately I'm not good at doing the fur. I don't know why, it's just not my thing. It takes like a decade, it's not working out. I actually used to usually do it uh, as the last part of doing this kind of puzzles. So the other thing I really suck at is sky. I don't really have issue with the gradient sky. You know, to be honest, I don't even have an issue with the sky that it's one solid color. But I have a major issue with the skies that have like clouds or other nonsense going on there. It's just not for me. And it's, it's a little troublesome because quite many puzzles have sky with some nonsense in them. <laughs> And then one more thing, the third thing I would like to mention that is hard for me is uh, grass. Grass, uh, bushes, I don't have issue with flowers specifically, probably because they're so colorful, but this kind of grass, uh, just, just terrible. With this specific puzzle, it took me like 20% uh, of my time just to do all this sky and all these uh, things, I don't know what you call them. Uh, but then the whole grass area, which is, I would say, maybe 50% of this puzzle, took actually like 80% of my total time. So yeah, I really got to work on that. So whatever weaknesses you have, uh, feel free also to comment them in this video. Maybe me or somebody else have really good tips uh, for that specific thing. But in general, just remember to practice for those weaknesses that you have, especially if you see a puzzle in the store and you're like, ooh, that's not for me, then that is definitely for you. But let's move on to my point number four. So of course the point of this video is not to tell you to not to do 500 fist puzzles. Of course, that's also important. Uh, but what do I recommend that when you do those 500 piece puzzles, do harder puzzles. Uh, for example, older puzzles are usually a good option because in average they are harder. They used to make puzzles more harder than what they do uh, nowadays. I personally buy a lot of puzzles from the reuse center. These are just a couple examples. They have usually bad interlocking as well. They usually have a little bit harder pictures, not too many colors. Um, the quality is not that nice always. In average, they're just a little bit harder. And uh, you know, the Ravensburger is quite a standard also in the puzzle competitions. And the thing is that uh, the, those puzzles from Ravensburger are rather easy. If I would say what do I mean by this is that I think it's a sales strategy for them, which totally makes sense. This is not a criticism at all, but obviously they want to make those uh, easy puzzles unless it's like some special puzzle that obviously usually says that on the cover. But in general, they make very like uh, beginner friendly puzzles. You really have like this devastating feeling on doing 500 piece puzzle from Ravensburger. So when you purposely do a little bit harder 500 piece puzzles, then the other 500 piece puzzles will also start feeling a little bit uh, easier to do. And obviously you can disagree with me and say that, you know what, I think Ravensburger 500 piece puzzles are the hardest there is, fine. But uh, at least take the point, uh, point uh, from this that whatever you feel are the harder puzzles, then do those. 
and of course in general to do more complex uh, a variety of different kind of puzzles you know i have crooked puzzles mystery puzzles impossible puzzles anything you can think of that's very good for you and we still have one point left so let's go to that one so there is two things i've learned in life first of all you need to learn how to win winning itself is kind of like its own skill because the second thing is that you don't need to be always the best to win i mean i think that's the beauty of competitions even if you're gonna like know the best teams best athletes uh best contestants uh you still don't know actually for sure who's going to win the competition environment is completely different from completing just puzzles at home so you probably have no clue what your physical and mental reactions could be and if you're wondering like physical reactions what then let me tell you um, the first time I, on my puzzle competition i actually started shaking uh, i don't think i was like too stressed i obviously i'm a very competitive person but i think i was just too excited and it wasn't just my hands shaking it was like everything shaking from my toes to fingers and i heard this experience from also uh, other bustlers so it's just not me and to be honest on that first competition of mine i was also so hyper that i even i noticed that i was breathing too fast so i was worried that i'm gonna pass out before this competition is over obviously uh, now that i've done already three competitions it's a little bit better but if my first competition would have been in the world uh, i probably would have been on the floor of that tournament hall uh, from the mental side i think many people can relate that when there's different kind of sounds and a lot of happening around you it can kind of get you distracted so that's definitely a, a one thing that it's very much different in the competition environment uh, the funny thing is that if you watch my previous video when i was doing the mini puzzle challenge the fact that i had a camera there alone in my home i got so confused on my first round that I feel like I was using the one first minute without doing anything relevant. And that is not the only thing. For example, I'm personally very worried for myself because um, now that I went to competitions, uh, I don't really have the experience too much of other people finishing the puzzle before me. So I'm pretty sure that in the world, I'm going to totally lose my cool when other people are going to finish. I mean, I don't know how fast I will be at that point. So there's a little chance that somebody's gonna be ready uh, 20 minutes before I am. So I'm probably gonna lose completely my cool over that. So I'm trying to find like other people who are faster than me so I can practice with them and just get the experience of losing miserably. So for example, in Finland, we don't really have like official competitions like Finnish nationals or something on speed puzzling. Uh, but I recommend to check out in your own country, your own area, wherever you live. Uh, if there is any puzzle competitions, they could be also online. If you live in Finland, I just have a blog post in my new website about how you can participate in these kind of competitions. Because that's how you actually learn not to do speed puzzles but to compete and to win the funny thing is i yesterday uh, asked my husband because i talk about puzzles all the time i was like hey you know what tomorrow on my video i'm gonna talk about uh, how to practice world of world jigsaw puzzle championships and uh, i was like uh, can you guess like i have five points can you guess at least one what i'm talking about i think he made like 15 guesses and he didn't get one right so i hope there was actually something I wouldn't say specifically new. I don't think I just invented anything new here. But I hope you got some like new pointers, uh, new ideas for your own practice. I'll put some extra tips also in the description, uh, just small stuff. So please make sure you also read that and comment what do you think about this video. 
And I would be so thankful that if you found this video interesting, then please share it to your fellow puzzlers or in social media. Uh, whatever comes to your mind, I would be so thankful. And also remember to subscribe to this channel. If you had any questions, comment below. I will be answering them. If there's a lot of confusion over something, maybe I'll do another video or a follow-up video with some new pointers. So please stay tuned and see you next time.